Introducing to you first, coming out of the blue corner. Running red trunks, he weighed officially 107 and one half pounds. A veteran of 43 professional analysis record stands at 35 victories. Eight defeats, 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is a challenger from Mexico City, Mexico. Please welcome. Fighter Chief second only, please. Fighter Chief second. Protector vocal. Mouthpiece. All right, gentlemen, you received the instructions in the dressing room. Know what I expect? A good, clean fight. Ya recibieron las instrucciones que una pelea limpia. Legal punches, golpes legales. Here for you. Here for you. Touch gloves, good luck to both of you. Buenas tardes los dos. One of the best pure power punchers, pound for pound, in boxing on display tonight, Angel Tito Acosta. 19 and one with 19 KOs. He puts his title on a man who is the former WBC light flyweight champion, Ganigan Lopez. Here we go, 12 rounds. Listo, listo. the WBO light flyweight championship Box. of the world. Acosta in the white trunks, Lopez in the red. Both guys are really ice cold. I don't see any sweat, any type of, uh, uh, you know, warming up before they came out. Let's see if they take two or three rounds to warm up. I doubt it, but it looks that way. Lopez's style is kind of uh, adapted over the years. He's more of a cautious boxer than he used to be. Tries to use his brain more than his brawn, so to speak. Yeah, Costa, he, he loves using his brawn. Yeah, he does. He sits back. Lopez, that is, he sits back in a southpaw stance. And like you said, he normally was, you know, a little different aggressiveness. But now he sits back in his career. And he waits from the southpaw position to counterpunch. Believe it or not, Miguel Cotto. Oh, nice punch there. That one. Made a big sound here in this arena. Miguel Cotto gave Acosta his first opportunity as a pro, putting him on the undercard spot on a show he was promoting in Puerto Rico. And Acosta showed thanks to Cotto by delivering the knockout of the night. Cotto said, hey, you know what? Why don't you just become one of my fighters? And now he promotes Tito Acosta. What an introduction. I mean, you gotta sign got it with that type of mentality. And also, throwing a straight right hand with the southpaw, that's the punch, and the left hook is normally on the blind side of an orthodox fighter, which is Lopez. The current champ in the light blue trunks, the former champ Lopez in the red, who's three and two in world title fights. the body language is telling you right now in these two fighters? Well, both of them is, is smart enough to know that they can't really extend themselves recklessly. And that's why they really fight in the way of caution this, but they also right there to counter if they need to. Right there, you see the straight right hand from an orthodox position because, again, Lopez is from a softball position. Acosta has only been the full 12 rounds once. Lopez has been the full 12 16 times. If you're Lopez's corner, do you try and drag Acosta into the later rounds? Yeah, I definitely I'll try to. Because look, I've been there, done that. I know what deep water is like. So let's see if deep water benefits me by going along the And this is an even round. I mean, both guys are really 
respect it. And they also a bunch of obviously is here. And look who else? Canelo Alvarez, the friend and sometimes training partner of Ryan Garcia. He has to look like he's ready to fight tomorrow or tonight. But it's going to happen. Yeah, May 4th, he'll be in there against Danny Jacobs, for taking time out of his fight camp to make the short drive. Probably this brand new car I've seen him flash online. Well, he probably got a hit Bugatti, faster on the plane. A Bugatti, is yeah. it not? Yeah. yeah. You can hit faster with a Bugatti than anything else. <laughs> Here we go. Round two, scheduled for 12. Ryan Garcia got to be really, really uh, impressed and excited that Donald's here to, to watch his fight. Our DJ a little excited, too, that DMX playing a little too long for my liking. But this fight right here is exciting because you know both guys are really getting in position to let their hands go. That was the first round in the second round. I'm looking to see fireworks here on. trying to implement the jab more. He said, we've got the power down. We know how to do that. Let's jab a little bit more. Because uh, Freddie, you know, Freddie Smart is a veteran. He wants to, like, sneak the first punch in and then work the power punch in after that because you sort of blind your opponent uh, with that. And so that's what Freddie wants to do. He know Lopez is there. He know Lopez is there to get hit with those saw punches, but then let the big punches come. Freddie said, listen, it's just a matter of time before somebody goes the distance with Acosta in a competitive fight, and we need to be ready for that. And I said, well, it's counting at Lopez, that guy? He said, I don't think so. As Acosta now, maybe has wobbled Lopez a little bit. He did, but before that wobble, Lopez wobbled, but before that, he, Lopez, threw a good straight left hand that got Acosta's attention. Fighters is waiting for each other to make a mistake because that's where they know they're going to be effective. Not a lot of respect for Lopez for Acosta before this fight. As I mentioned a while ago, Lopez said, I've been in there with four or five guys better than him. I'm not that impressed. So Lopez should be first and not wait because if he wait, he's going to get hit often. He must let his hands go from the position that he's in, and that's the sophomore position, the left hand and right hand, but he must let his hands go to be effective in the next couple of rounds. This is the first time the coach has faced the southpaw since 2014. Doesn't seem to be having too many issues with that stance. Round three from the Fantasy Springs Resort and Casino. A good second round there for Tito Acosta, the reigning WBO super flyweight champion of the world. Or light flyweight champion of the world, excuse me. A 12 round fight, both guys got good energy at this point in the fight. And now it's about now putting this statement out there because this really is the beginning of the middle rounds where you want to go ahead and you want to take the lead. Let's see who takes the lead. Right now it's an even fight to me. Does it look to you like Acosta just has a bigger frame even though they weighed in at the he, he definitely got a bigger back, a bigger frame um, from the back. Even his legs look much bigger. Yeah, I mean, the power is going to come from the legs. But right now, it's kind of even out. I haven't seen either guy really take a charge right now. And that will make this fight very interesting when it gets in the middle of it. Left hook right above the ear there landing for Acosta. What I want to see from either guy is body shots more. Because that would take the steam either out of either one of the guys must lose some energy and you got to take that body and attack that body seriously when you go to the body to make that statement later. Stop! Break! 
se pare se tira. Max. Excellent defense coming from both guys because they got to earn the punches they get. And this is what you see right now. Both guys got their hands up, both guys paying attention, throwing combinations when they need it. That right hand got in. Yeah. It got Lopez off balance. Acosta throws a really sneaky right hook when he throws that, that right hand behind that jab. And that's what Freddie said earlier in the fight. Throw that right hand, sneak that left hand in, or pick the right hand out, like he just did. Straight right, snuck through for Acosta. Acosta is definitely the better boxer. He should use that to his advantage and keep some room between both guys. I think Acosta's the better boxer. Yeah, I think Acosta's the better boxer because he's in position to throw more than one punch. Where Lopez wait to see if he can get a counter with one punch like that. Yep. Back into the fray we go. Round four, scheduled for 12. Angel Tito Acosta, 19 and 1. He's the world champion of the white trunks. Gotta get Lopez, the former champ, in the red. Stop! Rick! Here we go. We asked Acosta, would he prefer to have had some of his wins come by a decision? He said, well, you know, actually, yes, but it's not my fault they can't take my punches. I was born with my power. No one seems to be able to survive when they get hit. But Acosta has to be aware that opponents and future opponents and people would look for that power so they survive first and then try to fight later. He, he must not get sucked into that. He must set the punches up and let power come with speed, which he's doing now. Acosta has been sparring with 126 pounders, 130 pounders, including Costalito Vasquez. And we asked Freddie that, you know, do he got to fight guys that's a weight or two higher than him because of his punch of power? And Freddie, of course, said yes. Acosta has landed more than double the punches of Lopez so far. What do you want to see Lopez change? Obviously, it's not working for him so far. Well, I want to see him be more uh, aggressive to the body and also uh, try something new. Right now, he's at the same uh, level of the first, second round, first and second round. And you know what? He's getting hit with some sharp shots, so he's kind of leery of, of committing himself. and. Acosta you think, you knows think that. He's felt the power and knows maybe I should be a little more cautious. I, I think he felt the power, but he felt the speed first. Speed is power, and that's what he's leery of. That's what he's conscious in his mind. And that second of being consciousness is, is really keep him in this in sort of like a, a hole of not being able to be first. There's a nice exchange for Lopez. But Lopez has been forced to fight. He's been forced to fight, steady he's taking the lead. See, he's, he's, he's now been forced to fight because he don't want to get hit no more. And he has to fight. And that's when you're not fighting your fight. You're fighting someone else's fight. It's just a matter of time to get caught with a good punch. He's reacting and steady acting on his own skills of planning to win this fight. And you have to give credit to Augusta because he, he's di dictating yes, what he's doing. Knows. And he's making him fight that way. Stop! Para la campana, viene la campana. Box! Tempo! May 4th for Canelo next. Tonight for Garcia. Round 5 through 12. Bernard, how do you have this sport so far? Well, I definitely have Augusta winning this fight because he's throwing all the punches that he needed to throw. Um, he's winning every round, as far as I'm concerned. Augusta, now he's got a little bounce to him, so he's feeling good. He believes he's winning the fight. 
just got hit walking in with the right jab, but he seems to be comfortable, seems to be throwing the punches and taking the lead. And he's, he's bringing the fight to Lopez. Costa's only loss came to the hands of Kosei Tanaka 2017 in Japan, losing a unanimous decision. But Tanaka now regarded as the best flyweight in the world, so that loss has aged pretty well. But how long do you think it is before we see Acosta maybe move up a weight class, considering he has so much punching power for 108 pounds? Well, he can move up right now, but I think he got business at this weight division, and I believe he still can make the weight as he spoke about it at the, at the meeting. And, you know, he looks good. Right now, he looks good, he looks strong, he's bouncing, he looks like he's having fun right now. Blood now a little bit dripping out of the nose of Canigan Lopez, who hasn't really had many bright spots so far through four and a half rounds. Told us his plan was to punish the body of Acosta. He said, listen, if he wants to brawl, I'm not afraid. But I don't think Lopez really wants to brawl with this guy, does he? No. And he have not proved that he was going to go to the body because you go to the body, you got to sacrifice uh, your head if you're not quick to the body. You can't just go to the body and not get out. You got to go to the body and get out. And he have not shown that uh, speed or agility to be able to not pay for it. Still to come, our main event, Ryan Garcia and Jose Lopez. Garcia 17-0 with 14 knockouts. Lopez, though, expects to not only be very competitive, he thinks he can win this fight. 20 wins, only three losses for him. Yeah, I mean, he has a record that shows that he's a live dog if he's that dog. And you know what? You never underestimate anybody. So let me tell you, uh, Ryan better be focused for this fight because this is an opportunity for the other guy, which we know, must go in there with the mentality of he wanted to be, he wanted to be in that position. He wants to be the Ryan Garcia position. End of round five here from Good Fantasy ball. Springs. And, and the ring generalship that he's seen in front of him. Well, this is his sixth world title fight, Gannigan Lopez. So he knows what it takes to win these type of fights, but hasn't shown yet that he's capable of beating Angel Tito Acosta. Acosta is standing right there waiting for him to commit himself so he can do what? Counter. With the left hand. Have you seen the jab that Freddie Roach was talking about, the head movement that he promised? Well, I seen it the round before uh, the last round. But, you know, he's going to get back to that because he sees that that's the punch that's going to set up other punches. Shot from Lopez right on the belt line. For oh. Lopez, this fight is survived right now. And Augusta needs to go ahead and put the pressure on him to the body. And, and he will see a result. He just threw a good left hand. And it looks like he's going to go focus on that body when he get him in there the ropes. Lopez, when he gets near the rope, he seems not have no answer. For those film aficionados out there, you may have heard of the documentary made about Acosta's life called El Pugil. It premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival back in 2016. Fighting out of San Juan, Puerto Rico. Augusta still has that bounce in his leg. He's looking to count on over the right hand. He did it with a left hand just now. Sort of like a slash uppercut right hook, right hook. Better stuff in this round from Lopez. But is it good enough to win the round?
again, Acosta has never won a fight that's gone the distance. That's only been the distance once. Nineteen wins, nineteen knockouts. Trainers saying you're doing really good. Do you agree with that assessment from his corner? I don't agree with that. I think that he's uh, he's a back on the cards. Um, and he needs to go ahead now and take risks now. He needs to go ahead and try to establish that he, he's in this fight or at least make an attempt to. Yeah, six rounds to go, and there's an argument that Lopez may have lost all of the first six. That not a knockdown. A slip. That could be questionable because I seen two three body shots before he went down. Yeah, it was close. Let's see if there's any lingering effect. Acosta thought it was a knockdown. You know, Costa coming out with that in his eyes, like, I'm going to get you. I mean, he has that focus coming straight forward. And he has to be extremely confident right now to take a little risk, a little chance, because he's been doing really all the punches. Acosta was a teenager. He said he weighed 100 pounds, and he'd spar fighters as big as 135. Which just get in there and go toe to toe with him. He said he knocked almost all of them out. Stop! Break. Hey. One thing about having a reputation of big punchers, when other fighters hear that that you have to fight, they're going to be aware of that. And sometimes you got to figure out the puzzle and sort of sneak those big punches in. And that's what you're starting to see now from Augusta. The fact that Lopez is a southpaw, does that have anything to do with the fact that Acosta hasn't really lit him up yet? Well, I, I think it's either here or there because, you know, he's not fighting like a southpaw would fight because southpaw is going to use all his, his advantages. And, and, you know, Lopez is not doing that. To me, he's not doing that. He's not throwing a straight left and a right hand that will come from the blind side from the orthodox position. The southpaw must fight like a southpaw to have that advantage. The Lopez, to me, is standing straight in front of Augusta. It's a good wide left hook, but the right hand wasn't behind it, and that's where the mistake comes in. The only fights that Lopez has lost since 2015 have been to Kim Shiro, who's regarded as the best light flyweight in the world. He can let his hands go, Bernard. Here we go. He thinks Lopez may be right for the pick in here. As we enter round eight. And Freddie wants to make a statement also. He know how this thing go. I mean, people love knockouts. People see that this fight can be a, a fight that you can say, hey, you know, Gus is the real deal. He has the bounce getting on, now he's ready to throw some combinations. And he still has the legs and the strength to do it. So let's see if he listens to instructions from the corner. How about a look at our power punches so far through seven full rounds. Acosta outlanding Lopez by 38. Good body shot by Acosta, he can just wait and sort of pick his shots when he needs to. And that's what it seems to be comfortable for him right now. Nice little flurry there for Gannigan Lopez that appeared to just pester Acosta more than anything. Most of it was arm punches, but still it looks good to the judges in the crowd. So you don't want to get hit with unnecessary punches. So you should work on that tighter defense and punch in between the punch punches that's been thrown at him. Well, maybe Tito's just trying to get Lopez to open up a little bit, and he did, and he paid for it. Here goes Acosta, one of the best finishers in all of boxing. 
Lopez oh. is down. That is a knockdown. Tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, now he's ocho, down. That's a legitimate nine. knockdown. He, he will not get up. He will not get up. Angel Tito Acosta. 20 wins, 20 knockouts, and still the WBO light flyweight champion of the world.